Um, hello and welcome to the latest MCSP podcast with me, Anir. And me, Ada Scarrett, taking over from Lucy Alford, who has recently moved to France, where we hope she's enjoying her time. So today we have two summer students in to talk to us about their experiences of visiting uh, the university in an otherwise pretty quiet period. And so without further ado, let me introduce Julia, um, an undergraduate Erasmus student from Barcelona, and Ewan, an undergraduate from right here in Glasgow both of whom are currently doing placements in the lab of Marshall Stark. Hey, Hello. thanks for having us on. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, um, start with Julia. Um, could you tell us a little about your background and your undergraduate degree? Yeah, I'm studying, I am studying biotechnology in Barcelona, and I'm in the third year, and I'm starting the fourth okay. on, in September. So, I actually started medicine, but then changed, it, changed to biotechnology because I thought I wouldn't be like uh, comfortable with the uh, patients and treating with them, and I preferred the scientific base. And so I did the first the first year and changed to biotechnology to do like more pure science, and I'm really liking it actually. Like I think it's really broad, and you have many ways to get in the market and do different things. So that's why I chose it, and I'm very happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Okay. Mm. So. And you? Yeah, uh, so I've just finished first year and I'm studying general biology right now, but I'm hoping to in third year do uh, molecular and cellular biology. And I decided to go into science in sort of around second year in high school. I used to want to do archaeology, um, but I probably just watched too much Indiana Jones and realised <laughs> it's kind of boring, <laughs> there's does not pay very well. So I looked for oh, some more you things. You get to have a whip. That is true, that would be cool. And the hat. I think that's what I wanted, that's how I pictured it. And then we were doing careers advice and all that, and my and I think my teachers were like, no, that's not what it's like. <laughs> so I looked at other things and I realised it's kind of, I like the idea of discovering things from the archaeology and that kind of led me to science and biology and uh, eventually the university degree that I've applied for. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so now we know a little bit about who you are, it'd be good to talk about how you ended up here in Glasgow, obviously for you, you and it's not as far yeah. as it is born for in, I, was, I was born in Glasgow, lived here my whole life and just thought, yeah. I don't want to uh, move from home and have to spend all that money, so <laughs> yeah. stay but here. How did you come to be doing with summer placement though? Because that's not something that everybody yeah. does. So the summer placement is with um, what's called the Dobby Smith Prize that Glasgow Uni run. So it's for first and second year students and anyone can apply and two people get the prize uh, and the prize is for the botany and molecular science building um, they get a bursary the two winners get a bursary and a six to eight week placement um, where they do research with one of the professors in the lab yeah so congratulations for that. it was quite exciting yeah it was very exciting when, so when you apply for this is it you have to write a grant proposal you have to write an essay something a project yeah proposal? so you have just it's just like a 500 word um, sort of statement saying what it is you want to do and why you think you should um, get it how it will improve uh, your career chances and things and um, showing that it's relevant for you and then I think they kind of narrow it down to some people and then it, it gets to a point where it's just random drawing out of a hat kind of thing um, so yeah so you did you get to choose who you want to do it with or yeah so there's a list of professors who put their name down for yeah. participating in the prize and uh, yeah I chose uh, Marshall for Marshall Stark for my uh, project Mm, was that because of work that you already knew was happening in Marshall's lab or? Yeah, I, I basically, all the professors have their own profile on the Glasgow Uni website with like links to what papers they've done and things like that. So I went through a couple with who had research that I thought was interesting and uh, finally decided on Professor Stark for that one. Yeah, brilliant. And what about you, Julia? I um the next year I'm going to Copenhagen. Oh, so wow. I was looking for a research team that would host me for the next year. And so I had the email ready and everything and I knew that some of my friends at university um had gone for the summer to do an internship. So I was like, Okay, I have that ready and I can uh, I can use it just to apply for the summer too. So I had a friend doing the masters in Glasgow. 
and she told me she was really happy and she really liked it. And I looked at the university website and I've always been interested in HIV. So I, I saw that Marshall had a, a doctoral student, a PhD student, and working with HIV. So I just sent him an email like I would really like to help her and and she answered back, so. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, I don't know if you want to explain a bit more about your project, but it really does come between kind of biotechnology for medicine. Yeah, it? yeah, she's like uh, co making DNA constructs to use integrases to remove the HIV virus from cells. So mm -hmm. I really thought that was interesting and I just thought yeah. I could help. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice as a, that you'd already seen mm -hmm. someone yeah. and you wanted so to come and work. So would you like yeah. to tell us a bit about in a summary of what you, what project you're working on, yeah. So uh, the project I'm working on it's one of the, it's Jill, the P, a PhD student's project, and uh, she is trying to help to figure out the mechanism for how DNA recombinases work. So Marshall's done a lot of research um, to show to create the current model of how these recombinases uh, rotate, but. Um, there's, we're trying to get direct observational evidence of the actual rotation happening. So we're, uh, Jill has m created um, fluorescence which we attach to the proteins and then we can react, do the reaction and stop the reaction at different points and the fluorescence is um, fret so it shows different, basically different figures, a ratio of the um, fluorescence that can tell us the distance between the two fluorescents and so we can roughly see how the rotation is happening so that's my understanding of it and <laughs> as a first just finishing first year it's been a, a challenge to sort of understand the, the level of the mechanism and stuff so yeah it's quite <laughs> an in-depth project or, um, mm. And I'm just doing a slice of, of it. Yeah, um, but how are you finding it being like a, you know, finished first mm -hmm, year and then mm -hmm. doing something which is, you know, quite advanced science? Yeah, I think at first I was just basically following instructions a little bit. Um, but over time, I think I've got a picture of of how the mechanism, what we think is happening. Um, and I've had a few days now where, where Giles just said, do these experiments and I just run them. So I've run um, some uh, assays, a lot of gels, um, and the main thing I've been doing is um, helping make different um, molecules, DNA molecules to experiment on. So the, the, part, the part of the project I'm helping with is finding the right size of DNA molecule to um, react with the protein to get the optimal um, inversion, the optimal reaction. So. Yeah. Uh, it's been yeah, like I say, at first didn't really understand it. <laughs> um, probably still don't understand a lot, but it's been definitely you realise how your knowledge in, in first year can be applied to actual research. That's been really interesting. Yeah. Uh, it that. does sound like you very much dived into it as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, and I like, had a couple like basic papers that I read over to just kind of get a better idea of it and things. So um I definitely say um, first year knowledge is uh, a lot of people feel like it's I don't know they've already done it or it's advanced higher it's maybe useless but actually you can get by a lot with just what you've learned so far you know so, yeah if you pay attention in <laughs> maybe yeah <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you listen to lectures yeah yeah I mean Julie do you, I obviously I don't know as much about your undergraduate degree mm -hmm. as I do of you because I did my undergraduate here too yeah. but do you feel like the project what you're doing is something that you came into with a lot of kind of like prior knowledge about what you're doing or is it all quite new to you? Not really, like I knew the basic things but I think when you start a project uh, you have to read a lot and to get really involved in it because you may know like what an integrase is or what recombination is but maybe you don't know exactly what Jumai was doing so you really have to read everything and like get into it. Yeah, so. yeah. And is our uh, kind of the commonase is something that's been covered mm -hmm. in your undergraduate mm -hmm. teaching? Because, I mean, although it is quite a big field, it's not something that I think is kind of like everyday biotechnology. Yeah, no, like we know what they are and we may know like some names, but we definitely not know how to make an experiment with them or how do they actually work. Yeah. So 
yeah, you really have to learn that when you get here and start working with it. Yeah. I mean, on that point, um, when you do a summer project, you are, you are with limited time. Yeah. Um, are you are you taken through a, a full protocol or a workflow of what you will be doing, or do you come to? I mean, do you start off with well, essentially, doing a lot of reading up, and yeah. then learning the technique, applying the technique, and then getting results. So, do you, do you think that you can cover all that in the in the period not, there is? Not really. I think actually I will be very short on the result part because now I've learned like I've done all the reading and everything, and I've learned the experiments I have to do. Because now we are um, making the proteins you might did, but making them work a little better or just trying to make it. Yeah. So now we've done uh, some of the experiments she did, so we, we were repeating the, the first month. Of course. And now we're trying new things, but to get to the final result, we would need like more time, and I won't be here. So. I agree. But so, so this is, however, giving you a good foundation mm -hmm. as to how to go about doing say a project for a longer period but getting everything yeah. right the initial part of the project is always important rather than mm -hmm. what will happen in the end so yeah. this gives you a good time for you for you as yeah, well from true. a first year yeah for, for me it's been really um informative just watching uh jill create her pro like her process for creating methods and and yeah. for like i don't need to do as much of the reading because i'm not designing the experiments but seeing the, the type of work that you do to, to come to an idea of how to make something. Because so far it's just when I do experiments in uni, it's just here's a protocol, uh, do it and you'll get results. They'll probably be this. Um, so this has been really great just to see what it, how you actually come up with like an idea of what to research because like, I don't think I could at this point do that yet, but maybe with this um, summer project I can have a crack at it and if I got given some thing to research just you know look yeah. into it I'd be able to yeah. know what to do <laughs> I think, where to start. Um, actually in our last podcast when we were talking to Bethany who's a, a technician I was saying that I think sometimes there's a really big leap between theory and practicality yeah, of experiments yeah, and like so I think you know for me at least um, going from undergrad to kind of PhD the biggest change was like, okay, I know the theory of all of this, but how do you literally do it? Like, yeah. you know, I can yeah. design an experiment, but you know, how do I actually follow that experiment yeah. through? And I feel like these placements are so good for yeah. being able to get some of that actual physical yeah. hands-on experience. It's kind of like where like... to start. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're quite often you're, you're put into something in the middle of it, like a project and when you're in uni, but when you're in a, doing a PhD or a master's or whatever, it's kind of like, you're just, given something and you have to start it yeah. yourself and you're like oh I don't know how to start so this yeah. helps I think this kind of project helps uh, yeah seeing him and Martin also it's just him watching how Marshall how he the problems gets the information like, from well, many places <laughs> and really I don't know I just learned by watching him like literally no well I mean I have a small anecdote you guys are lucky that you get to have hands-on experience yeah I did my master's uh, in India in uh, cell molecular, molecular and cell biology if you like and we never had hands-on experience. Mm. Everything was theoretical. Mm. Up until you go to do a PhD in a lab, you would never be allowed to touch the machines or the, you know, everything. So I did my summer placement in a, in a very, very prestigious place. But my summer placement was me sitting next to a guy, <laughs> him doing everything, yeah. and I'm making notes on how he's doing it. So yeah. theoretically, just as we said, theoretically, I'm a, I was perfect. I yeah. could tell exactly what happens. If I, if I was told, to, I mean, if I, I could never do it. So I, so you guys are pretty lucky in that way, I yeah. think. So yeah, getting hands-on experience. So, anyways, coming to the next question, um, how, how do you think this placement will help you with your future careers, um, if you know what you want to do yet? Well, I don't really know what I want to do, but I actually applied for for this internship because I wanted to know if I if the lab really suited me like I didn't know I have made I had made practices at, at the uni but I didn't know what was a lab actually like in real life so I wanted to see how people worked here and how everything was going and yeah that will help I think make a decision in the future like for my masters or if, or if I want to do a PhD or so yeah that was basically what I got <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I was very much the same it's um I'm sure if I do decide to do research, having something like that on your CV is very good. But more importantly, it will 
this is helping them form me, my decision on do I actually want to work in a lab? <laughs> what is it like? Because uh, cla- like labs in um, first year and actually doing a PhD are just like really different. So this has helped me and I've, I've enjoyed it. So hope, I think it will encourage me to do something more research in the future. Yeah. Um, but it's also um, will be helpful in applying for a master's because um, the way that there's an in- I can do an integrated master's um, where I'll be working in industry for a year mm-hmm. and to get the best placements for that you need to have lab experience and work experience so getting that as soon as possible is quite good because it's a big relief off my shoulders like some people don't try until the year before and then they have lots of pressure to find work experience to apply for a master's whereas I'll have time to just kind of not worry about that is so much <laughs> Yeah, I know. I think that it is good to have the experience in your belt because so many places will ask, you know, do you have lab experience? What kind of experiments have you done? And I mean, sometimes it's it doesn't matter if you know the techniques that they want you to use, but they just want to know that you have been kind yeah. of capable yeah. in a lab setting before. Yeah. But um, going back to what you said, Julia, I think it is, it is really interesting because I think as an undergrad, I know from my experience, I had no real idea of what it was going to be like to work yeah. in a lab because it's yeah. so different to what you, you do as an undergrad. And I remember when I went into my fourth year um, placement, so in my undergrad, in my final year, I actually worked in Sean's lab, which is where I'm still doing my PhD now. And I thought that I didn't want to do lab work. I was certain <laughs> that I was never going to work in a lab. I was like, no, no, I'm going to go work in an office because I don't like lab work. And then, I mean, it was the 10 week placement that I did with right. Sean in my final year that made me think, oh, actually, no, I do love this. Yeah. But it, it, it can really change your opinion, like when you actually just go into a lab and do something. I, I was so surprised at how different it was in reality to what I thought yeah. it was going to be. Yeah. But, I mean, you do get a lot of people going the other way as well, but I think yeah, you're like, true. yeah, I definitely want to work in a lab, and then <laughs> they go to one, and it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, the last kind of question I was going to ask you about your kind of lab work is, we've kind of covered it a little bit before, but <laughs> what have you found different in this placement to things that you've done previously? So, I mean... I guess neither of you have done a lot of work in labs previously, but you know, how have you, like for you and maybe how have you found it different being yeah. in a kind of higher up level and something that's not so I think for first year labs are very much just focused on um, teaching you lots and lots of skills um, or more getting you to have experience with lots of different skills, but not really learning one particular one. So like, one week you might do gels, one week you're working with plants, one week you're looking at skulls. And also in first year, because the biology is so broad, it's not focused on your subject. You're, you're doing labs for different parts of biology. So this is, um, summer placement has really gotten me to focus on just a few skills um, that are very specific to what I want to do. So it's helped a lot with that. Uh, and it's also different because there isn't, just a, a plan there isn't a fixed thing that you that you do that every other year before you has done it's like you're you're editing on the fly deciding mm, actually we're going to change this and that and I've not been the decision maker but I've been able to put input into uh, decisions which is very different I think that's um, one of the most fun parts is being able to actually decide how you're going to move forward in an experiment and not just kind of blindly following a step-by-step plan so yeah, that's the biggest it difference feels more like it's your own work yeah yeah it's, well. and, and it's like it feels like no one's done it before or very very few people have done what exactly what you're doing before so it's it's nice yeah and for yeah. you Julia I guess it's a, probably a bigger difference because it's like what maybe have you found different here in kind of Glasgow mm-hmm. in general and in the university to back in Barcelona like but with the, with the lab it happened more or less the same like uh, I might be in the third year but most of my lab work was like that like I was mm-hmm. given a, a list of steps I, I should follow and I just I could not think like I just pipette things and that's it mm-hmm. and and the material was like awesome for me because we uh, are used to share pipettes uh, with maybe four persons at the same time so being like free in the lab and having everything there was 
awesome. <laughs> like yeah, really. yeah. your own bench space. Your yeah, and my own bench. Like I've never thought that. <laughs> that good. Yeah. Like, maybe in my masters, but not during my my bachelor. So yeah. it was amazing. And I, yeah. I was always. I mean, one of the things that surprised me going into labs is that when you have your own work you spend a lot more time working on your own right mm-hmm. like it's like in undergrad you're almost always in a group or at least a pair yeah, yeah. and so you're always with one other person yeah. but where when you know like when you have got your own project and suddenly it's like oh this is my bench yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my space and I can't ask somebody to do this for me I have to do everything yeah, myself yeah. but I mean it, it's really nice like I say it's really nice as well when it's like starts to feel like your own work yeah, and, yeah. yeah. you can have a lot of in it, I yes. Well, good. Well, essentially, then the, the the next question or final question for the questions would be, what sort of tips would you give any other students or people who are looking to look, go into sort of undergrad, bio, you know, biological, bio, biotechnological mm-hmm. studies, um, to on doing a summer placement? How how good it would it be for them to do it? Well, I I definitely say do it, um, but also have an idea of what research you're interested in. Um, Because there's a lot of people who have like, oh, quite like biology or quite like molecular biology, but not sure what that kind of research entails. So I think it's quite good to read things like New New Scientist or you know those kind of science magazines. Um, Maybe even read a couple papers and just look at what is the actual research, (laughs) and that way these kind of projects are are easier to find because you know what to look for. You're like that's who I'm looking for. That's what I want to do. Yeah, would you, would you say something to that? Yeah, and I think you have to be like really open because maybe you look for many things, but you don't really know. You've never done it. Well, maybe you're in third year and you have, but um, you may expect something and then get there and it's completely different. Like hmm. uh, when I applied, I thought Jumai would be here, and when I got here, she already had finished. So <laughs> it was like on my own and. I don't know, you have to be open and ask many questions and just, and then get there and it's completely different. Like, hmm. uh, when I applied, I thought Jumai would be here and when I got here, she already had finished. So <laughs> it was like on my own and I don't know, you have to be open and ask many questions and just, I don't know, find yeah. your way. <laughs> and so the podcast edition is that we end with some quick fire questions. And um, so there's obviously okay. two of you, so uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll do like maybe you and then Julia yeah, answer. Sure. Okay, cool. Um, so firstly, what's your favourite food? Uh, barbecue spear ribs. <laughs> Especially when there's with like a Chinese, like that's one of my favourite okay. ones. Mm. I quite often have that for my birthday. Yeah. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> that's good. I like, it's a, a bit weird, but frozen yoghurt with mango and Nutella. Mm. It's not a dish, but it's, yeah. I really like it. Yeah. yeah, that sounds amazing. I've never thought about having <laughs> yeah. that before. I, I, I think when I went to Mallorca, they had these frozen yogurt yeah. shops. Yeah, I think that's typical in Spain. I don't know Oh, it's okay, okay. So, <laughs> no, I, saw, I saw it was very interesting. And there were like 100 flavors there which yeah. you could choose from. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I'm more of a raspberry in my flavored yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would probably actually go raspberry as well. But... <laughs> I think it's maybe maybe something to do with the weather. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I yeah. 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 So, favorite book? Uh, Lord of the Rings. I oh, love yeah. Lord of the Rings. It's so decisive. <laughs> yeah. These questions. Yeah, yeah. Lord of the Rings because um, just, I, I read them a long time ago and didn't quite finish them, and read reread them recently and just got really into it. Started playing a Lord of the Rings game. Read the summary. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> really into it for a bit <laughs> yeah you've delved right <laughs> yeah cool and for me it is La Sombra del Viento which is The Shadow of the Wind oh. by Carlo Ruiz Afon okay and I really like all of his books actually like I couldn't pick one but it's the first one I read and it made like a big impression on me so. yeah well, what's it about I never it's like never heard uh, he writes really mysterious stories and there's some kind of spiritual thing in his stories which makes them a bit spooky but mm. not really like there's no big murders or big it's just mysterious and it's like yeah. kind of a love story involved in that so okay. I don't know I really like yeah. the way he writes yeah, yeah. wow <laughs> um, so the next thing is favourite film slash TV I don't think you're allowed to say Lord of the Rings again I won't I <laughs> know <laughs> if you don't want 
the I think favorite films too hard because there's like a few really good films that I like, but TV show would actually be Avatar: The Last Airbender. Ah, uh, it's, it's a cartoon yeah. and it seems really childish, <laughs> but it's really well written. And yeah. when you kind of um, watch it all, it's actually like much better than a lot of things that are made for adults. So <laughs> I very much enjoyed that. Is that based on something else? Because there's a film of it as well. There is there? a film, and the film's based on the TV show, and the film is oh. dreadful. Yeah, M Night Shyamalan <laughs> after the Sixth Sense just couldn't just know. yeah. Could make a good movie. It's quite unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah, yes. last airbend. Yeah. Um, do you know what? Do you have a yeah. favorite TV? I really like Tarantino films. Mm. And okay. if I have to pick one, it's really like um, popular, but Pulp Fiction. Yeah, would be yeah. My favorite Classic. one, I think. Yeah, but yeah. there's a new Tarantino coming out. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but Pulp Fiction is definitely a classic. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, I like the way he compartmentalizes <laughs> each thing in his chapters. Yeah, I love when he does that. Like, mm. There's really? a story, and then the, many stories come together. Yeah. And he goes back and forth. Yeah. Like, I love him. Amazing story. <laughs> yeah. So he was, he was asked, "Is this how many more are you going to do?" And he said, "This is going to be the, his last film, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and it's his ninth film." So maybe you could finish a ten tenth movie. He said maybe, but I, I want to be recognized for a body of work, and that's it. I don't yeah. want it. So that's you know, he's he's a, he's a weird chap, anyways. Yeah, yeah. good, well, good, good <laughs> choice. Okay, uh, favorite pastime or hobby? Uh, that would be parkour or free running. Really? Okay. Yeah. So I've been doing that for since I was about fourteen or fifteen, nice. and just started learning on my own, and then. Um, I, last year I joined, strangely, the Strathclyde Parkour Society because Glasgow doesn't have one. Mm. Um, and then this year, we, um, somebody from the Strathclyde one who moved to Glasgow, me and him have started a Glasgow Parkour Society. So we're hoping this year to get that off the ground. And yeah. uh, um, we're all affiliated and got um, stalls for Freshers Week. So hopefully that will all work out. Oh, yeah, I think <laughs> loads cool. of people will be into it in Freshers yeah. Week. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. last year... At Strathclyde Uni, the um and Freshers Week got like sixty or seventy sign ups. No, obviously that didn't translate to the whole numbers because a lot of yeah. people sign up to things and don't come. But um, yeah, hopefully that'll get yeah. off. I hope it's safe though. Yes, it's very <laughs> don't safe. Worry. Don't worry, don't give up anything too high. <laughs> I know. We we generally stick to um lower down stuff with the society. It's it's more for people as well that do parkour who want to meet with other people who do it as opposed to like teaching yeah um we do we do offer advice to people sometimes but it's kind of like things that it's like mutual you teach someone and they teach you some stuff and everyone has already got a level of safety and, and experience usually so yeah so where's the highest you've been uh i've been was it eagle i've been <laughs> up a few cranes uh, I've been up, you know the People Make Glasgow building? Yes. Mm. We went up there. Um, and, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm already feeling nervous. <laughs> that's that's yeah. not parkour, though. Because um, a lot of people like to distinguish um, urbex, which is urban exploration, yeah. and parkour. Um, so parkour is strictly the, the physical, like, overcoming obstacles, training, doing tricks and things. Um, whereas urbex is like climbing buildings and stuff um, because I think the media gives parkour a bad rep because it's like look at these people they fell off a crane and it's like well they were just some random people who climbed the crane they don't do parkour yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. so a lot of people who do parkour go on to do urbex because you learn how to overcome obstacles and then you like want to apply that to climbing things so yeah, yeah. but that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody who climbs yeah. something yeah, it does parkour, yeah. or that everyone else parkour climbs things. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Cool. <laughs> and Julia? Mine is not that <laughs> exciting. <laughs> but I've played basketball for my whole life, oh, and I'm really yeah. into sports. But if I had to choose one, I would choose photography. Because ah. I really love taking pictures, and next year I'm starting like a serious course of photography. Yeah, and oh, it's so what, what, what do you have at the moment? What gear do you have? Uh, a 
Nikon D3. Nikon. Oh. One. <laughs> yeah, there's, I, I don't understand that competition really. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, and what sort of photography do you like? I love to photograph uh, people, but okay, not so like portrait. portraits, like street. not straight. Yeah, in the street. Candid. Sorry? Candid photography, yeah. I think it's called. So, yeah, so yeah, do you yeah. go, do you often in the street lurking yeah. around? <laughs> yeah. I used to yeah. do that, yeah, I used to do that a lot. I mean, it's, it's fun because you can make up stories of people. So um, mostly, unfortunately, all the, I made a series of people mm -hmm. on their phones. So you're in a <laughs> yeah, crowd of, cool. of yeah. people walking down on there, and all you're doing in a beautiful city is so you're on your phone. So I made a series of that as well. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, I knew a person, um, a, a very elderly photographer who has been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. He used to take his film camera and down the streets of um, of Glasgow yeah. in Argyle Street or Sakyol Street, he'd meet up random very not normal looking people and take portraits of them That's so cool. by speaking to them understanding their story and then taking a photo of a beautiful yeah. bouquet at the back i and want lovely. to start doing that like actually speaking to the person i'm taking a picture of and just maybe writing some notes of he, his or her life and I, i'd really yeah. love to so do there's that there's something called a project if you like if you if you can do it it's a personal project it's called 100 portraits mm -hmm. um, project too deep. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but the next one you actually already touched on you is what did you want to be when you grew up do you know like before you decided to go into science yeah so it was archaeology for me <laughs> um like when i was you know what the parkour might have helped you there <laughs> running away from boulders and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, it's all part of my indiana jones training <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm just gonna go out there and start um finding temples to raid um, <laughs> but yeah like when I was eight or nine I'd, I'd sometimes watch time team on the history channel so <laughs> that was one of my things that I found interesting and I, I still really enjoy history and um, specifically like stone age um, to kind of the turn of the millennia or yeah. sort of you know AD um, so yeah i find that all really interesting yeah. and i love going out in the countryside in scotland and imagining the the millennia of, of human history that's that's been there yeah. because a lot a lot of people have been in those same spots and they've like hardly changed mm -hmm. for a long time so yeah. um from a young age i really enjoyed that but i just decided that doing a career in archaeology might suck some of the joy out of it and some of yeah. the interest um, Definitely a lot muddier than being in a lab. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I would like to do something outdoorsy, but um, or what I like about the lab is that you get to stand. <laughs> I hate sitting for a long, long time. So yeah, um, it's nice being able to stand and do things with your hands. So. Yeah. yeah. And Julia, and for me, it's quite strange, but since I was very little, I I said. I wanted to be a biochemist. <laughs> really? Like, but, it's been a lifelong dream. Yeah, but uh, I didn't really know what it was, but my parents are chemists, and my yeah. father is really a science person, so yeah. he has always uh, taught my brother and I um, science things, and obviously basic because we were little. But, and I really like animals too, so I was like, chemistry, biology, biochemist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just said yeah. that. And I also also said I wanted to be a shepherd. I think is the name, like the person <laughs> yeah. that takes care of sheep. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Because we have a, a house in the yeah, <laughs> we have a house in the mountains, and I love being there. So I was like, if I want to live here, what could I do like to yeah, live? Yeah, yeah. So I said, shepherd. live a very quiet life in the yeah. mountains. Yeah. Oh. I would like to I be would like, yeah, I think, as yeah. well. Yeah, I think yeah, you, you yeah. want it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's strange for a little girl like to say, what do you want to be? And everyone is like, a singer, a hairdresser. And I was like, biochemist. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I wanted to be a farmer, which yeah. wasn't far off the yeah. shepherd, actually. Um, that, that was a great conversation, I think. And that's the... As the end of the podcast, so thank you for yeah. thank giving you. up your time. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Yeah. No worries. Right? Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> and we shall see everyone else in the next podcast. So bye for us. Bye. <laughs>